good day student i hope you are all doing well very good today what you are going to discuss is about decimal fraction and when you say decimal fraction they are the numbers with a point a point means a single point examples of decimal fractions include 0 0.2 3.23 here 4.21 0 6.7 0 0.15 5.97 Let's see how to identify decimal fractions. Some of the components that will enable you to see that this number here, or this kind of number here is a decimal fraction. So identification of decimal fraction, basically we have three parts of decimal fractions, which are whole numbers, decimal points, and decimal numbers. When you talk about the whole numbers, the whole numbers of decimal fractions are the numbers that come before the point. Like the example that I gave it to you, 0.2 here. The number that comes before the point is a zero here. This number here comes before the point. So the zero here is the whole number. When you come to the second example, 3.23, the number that comes before the point here is the three. Therefore, three here is the whole number. When you come to the next one here, 4.21, the number that comes before the point, number, it the point meaning a four and twenty four a whole number. So, me say decimal fraction or incrementa means a number of whole numbers, a number of decimal points, and a number of decimal numbers. Whole numbers of decimal fractions are the number that comes before the point. So number say did the point in any meaning in any from whole numbers. Decimal points is a point in the decimal fraction. So those numbers with a point, all those points, the name of the actual point, we call it decimal point. Let's see the last aspect of the decimal fraction here. We have the decimal numbers decimal numbers they are the numbers that comes after the point they are the numbers that comes after the point let's use the first example here the 0 0.2 here the 2 comes after the point a deep point in the number say deep point from decimal numbers Remember, I said numbers is the point in the name of the from whole numbers. The point is also within the decimal point. Good. Example, 2.19 is a decimal fraction. Yes, because 219 is a number, but there's a point here. That is why we said a decimal number is the other numbers with a point. If there is no point here, this number would have been called decimal what fraction. Because of the point in the number, that is why this number here is called decimal fraction. Two is the number that comes before the point. Two, the point in the name. Therefore, two is a whole number. Point. The point is a decimal point that separate the whole numbers and then the decimal numbers. So the point is intermediate between the whole number 
and the decimal numbers. The 19, that is one nine. In the decimal numbers, we don't say 19. We read those numbers as one nine. The uh, one after the other. So you can put them together and say 19. If we do more one after the other. So it's one nine, not 19. They come after the decimal point. Therefore, they are called decimal numbers. So all those decimal numbers here, example like this one here, 5.97 is not 5.97. Is 5.97 because decimal numbers here have those decimal numbers here have to be taken one after the other because you have to take them one after the other like nine and seven so it's 5.97 not 5.97 good now let's see the decimal fraction here these are the component that I was talking about. 845.297. 845.297. The whole number here is the 845. The reason why I put this one together is that they are the whole numbers, uh, the rare numbers. Into no ultimate cards and say eight four five point eight. No, you whole numbers in the you can deny the boom, but the decimal numbers in the you can mark which is eight hundred and forty five point two nine seven. We don't say eight hundred and forty five point two hundred and ninety seven. No, that one is wrong. So you could see it clearly that the diagram, the page here. The whole numbers is the 845. The dot here is called the decimal point, and the 297 is the decimal numbers. Now, there's another diagram here which shows the position of the numbers. Let's see. The place value of the decimal fractions. So these are the place value they get here. Let's see the difference between the whole number side and the decimal numbers. The place value of whole numbers start with ones. So you could see clearly that the five here start with ones. So the place value of the whole numbers start with ones from the right side of the numbers in that order. So the moment you have your whole numbers here, you start with ones, 10, and 100 in that order. The place value of decimal numbers start with tens, so which means that they are not the same. The place value of decimal numbers start with tens from the left side of the numbers in that order. So when you come to the decimal numbers, which is the 297, the place they get here before you can put a digit at the top here, you must start with things. Sanity. So the difference between the decimal numbers here and the what the whole numbers here. When you start with the whole numbers, they start with the ones, tens, hundred, starting from the right side of the number of the whole number. And then when you come to the decimal numbers here. They also start with the 10, 100, and 1,000. You don't have ones in decimal numbers. We don't have ones in decimal numbers. And they also start from the left side of the numbers in that order. So make note of that. How to change decimal fraction to common fraction? Now, once we have the decimal fractions, you must change them into common fraction. When we say common fraction, they are fractions, okay? It's not something different here. So how to change decimal fraction to common fraction? One, indicate the position or the place value of the decimal numbers first. So you indicate the one that I just read to you. 
that the decimal number start with the tens, even it start from where? From the left side. So it start with the tens, hundred and thousand in that order. If the last digit of the decimal fraction is placed in the 10th position, then the entire number will be divided by 10. And when the last digit of the decimal number is placed in the 100th position, then the entire number will be divided by 100 in that order. Okay. Now, let's change the following decimal fractions below into the common fraction. Good. A, 0 0.2 is a decimal fraction. We have the whole number here is 0 and the decimal number here is 2. B, 2.5 is a decimal fraction. The whole number here is 2 and the decimal number here is 5. 0 0.21 is a decimal fraction. The whole number here is zero and the decimal numbers here is two, one. 3.19 is also a decimal fraction. The whole number here is three and the decimal number here is one, nine. 21.3, the whole number here is 21 and then the decimal numbers here is three. 61.47, the whole number here is 61, and the decimal numbers here is 4, 7. Now, let's solve the first one here. A, let me write my solution first. Now A, we have A, which is 0 0.2. And remember, we said you must indicate the place value digit at the decimal number side. So here, the decimal number here is two. Then, because it starts with tens, and that is the 10. So which means that the entire number here will be divided by 10. That is only decimal number here. So we have zero, two, all over 10. Because the moment we divide the number, you must remove the points. And then the zero two is also two over ten. Okay, zero two is the same as two, so your final answer is two over ten. The two over ten, if possible, you can do the cancellation. The two can cancel the two, and then can cancel the five. So here you can do the cancellation. Two goes here one, two goes here five. So the final answer here is one over five, okay? So 0 0.2, the common fraction is one over five. Let me do the B. B. That is 2.5. You must indicate the position of the decimal numbers, only the decimal numbers. So here, we call the decimal numbers start with tens. That is only one number here. So once the position or once the decimal number is placed under the 10, which means that the entire number here Will be divided by 10 so it will be 25 
over 10. And when you have 25 over 10, you can also cancel them, okay? Five goes into 25, which is five here. And then five goes into 10, which is two. So the answer here is five over two. Okay, so 2.5 in the fraction here, five over two. Then let's see the C. The C is 0 0.21. So you must indicate the position of the decimal numbers. So remember we said decimal numbers, the position or the place value they get start with the 10. So reading from the left, so here will be tens and here will be 100, okay? Since the last digit is placed under the 100, therefore the entire number here is going to be divided by 100. So zero, to one all over 100. Okay, and 0, 21 is the same as 21, 21 over 100. Good. Now let me see question D. which is 3.19. You indicate the position of the digits. Here is 10, here is 100. Since the last digit of the decimal number is placed under the 100, the entire number here is going to be divided by 100. Then you have 319 over 100. This one you can cancel, then you leave it like that, okay? That is the fraction. Then the E. When you have 21.3, then the decimal number here, the last digit here, we start with the 10 because remember we said decimal numbers, the place value digit start with the 10. Normally it started from the left side of the numbers. So you start with the tens, not the same as the whole number. The whole number start with the ones, okay? Good. So since we have only one number placed under the 10th, therefore the entire number here is going to be divided by 10, which means 213 divided by 10. So which is 213 over 10. That is the fraction. When you talk about a fraction, you are referring to the part of a whole, which is the numerator and what? the denominator. So if your fraction doesn't have the numerator and the denominator, then it's not a fraction. Now let's see the F. The F, we have 61 point four seven. 61, then you indicate the position of the digit. Here is 10, and here is 100. Always, you indicate the position of the decimal numbers. That will help you to what? To turn them into the fraction, because you use the place value digit of the decimal numbers to change the entire numbers into the fraction. So you check the last digit here, since the last digit, which is the seven, place under the hundreds position of the decimal numbers, 
Therefore, the entire number here is going to be divided by 100. So this time, we know the fraction, any point. We don't have a fraction with a point. So you have to remove the point. Once you divide it by the last digit of the decimal number, the point must be vanished, okay? So you must remove the point. So here will be 61, four, seven here, all over 100, because the last digit of the decimal number here is placed under the 100. So the entire number here must be divided by 100. Good. Please try this one for me now. Try them now. A is 0 0.7, B is 0 0.5, C is 1.5, D is 21.69, and the E is 0 0.312. Now, we are good. since you know how to change the decimal fractions into the common fraction, you must also know how to change the common fraction back to decimal fraction, okay? And here we have only two methods, two methods that we can use, or the method needed are the long division method, or you can either change the given fraction into tenth, into tenth means make sure that the fraction will be over 10. Into 100 means you make sure that the fraction will be over 100. Into 1,000 means make sure that the fraction will be over 1,000. So let's work simple examples here. Let's change the following. Let me work on this one, okay? Let's change the following common fractions to decimal fraction, okay? We are going to change the following fractions into decimal fraction. One, we have one over 10, B, we have one over 100, and the C, we have one over 1,000. So AAC and the change in a very simple, what they call decimal, because one over 10, when you have one over 10, if you want to change to decimal fraction, the 10 possess only one zero, then you put it here, okay? Then you bring the numerator, which is one, all over 10. Then, because you want the decimal fraction and the decimal fraction is a number with a point. Therefore, we are going to use the denominator here to make a movement. So each circle will make only one movement. So you start from the back of the number, you move to this side, okay? This steps will cancel one zero here. And there is no zero to move the point forward. So the remaining step end here, okay? So there's no way you will move again. Therefore, our final answer will be 0 0.1, okay? When you have one over 100, if you want to change this one, into decimal fraction. Decimal fraction, they are the numbers with a point. So you check the number of zeros here, which is two, you put them in front of the numerator, and the numerator here is one, okay? All over the denominator again, which is 100, okay? Let me write this 100, well, good. Now, because you want the decimal fraction, this denominator here with this two zero will help us to put a point in a number. So denominator now will handle the at the point I see by using the steps. Okay. So you move from the back. So you count the number of denominator here, the number of zeros here. 
we have only two zeros. The hundred possesses only two zeros. So which means that you make only two steps. So we're starting from the back, one, two. The point will be here, okay? So each step will cancel one zero. Each step, another step here will cancel this zero. Therefore, our final answer is zero point zero one, okay? This is point, okay? Now, let's solve this one. One over 1,000, okay? In order to change this one into fraction or decimal fraction, then you put the three zeros in front of the numerator, the three zeros, and the numerator here is one, okay? then all over the 1,000. Because the 1,000, you are going to make three movements. Because of the three zeros, you make three movements here. So you start from the back. So when you start from the back, you have one, two, and three, okay? Each step will cancel the one zero Another step here will cancel the one zero. Another step will cancel this zero. Now there's no more zero to move the point outright. So therefore, our final answer here will be zero point zero zero one. Okay. Then that's our answer. Now, you can either use the long division method to do this one. You still get that. When you have this one here, the 10 people are sharing one item. So you bring the one here and the 10 will be outside, okay? So if 10 are sharing one, it can be possible. So you put zero here, okay? which means that that day they will not get anything. So each will go home with empty handed. So that is zero. Zero times 10, in order to check whether there will be a confirmation, zero times 10 will give you zero. When you subtract, you get one. When you subtract the zero from the one, you get one. Now since there's nothing here to drop it down, you call for a point. The function of the point is to produce zero to the number that is not sufficient. So the point will add zero to this number, making it 10. Now it's possible that the 10 can share this one. Okay, so 10, share this 10. Nipa 10, share the 10, we have a one. And then in order to confirm whether there will still be a remainder, one times 10 will give you 10, okay? Then you subtract, when you subtract 10 and 10, you get zero here, okay? So the final answer here is what? 0 0.1. You see, when you use the long division, you still get the same answer. But the best method that you must use is the long division, okay? So try to use the long division all the time. But the moment you have a question which is over 10, over 100, over 1,000, don't waste your time to use long division. Then you just put the two zeros or the three zeros or the number of zeros of the denominators and then you solve. You can try this one using the long division method. Now let's do this one here. Let's change the following common fraction below to decimal fractions. Okay, so let's assume that I wanted to use long division to solve the question one. So the question one, I have one over five. If I wanted to use long division, which means that the five people are sharing one item, the item must be in the box and the five will be outside. If five people are sharing one, it can be possible for that day, so they will get zero. Then you the zero to multiply the five. Zero times five will give you 
Zero. When you subtract it, zero from one, you get Um, when you subtract zero from one, you get one here. Since there's nothing here to drop it down here, then you call for a help to come and help you out. Then that help is called a point, okay? So you put a point here. The function of the point is to produce zeros to make the number that is not possible to make it possible. So the point will produce zero to this number here. Now it's possible now you can share this number. Now it's 10. So five goes into 10, that is what two. Okay. So let me write the two all. That is two. Good. To confirm whether there will be a remainder, use the two to multiply the five. And that one will be 10. When you subtract, you get zero, zero. So the final answer here is 0 0.2. So this one is 0 0.2. You can either use the other method, whether to change this one into 10. Into 10, when you have one over five, not all fraction that you think you can change to 10 or 100 or 1000, but those fraction with denominator like 5, 2, 4, and 10, you can change them. So this fraction here, we can change them into 10. Okay, 10 means to make sure that the fraction will be over 10. So when you have one over five, but you want our fraction here to be over 10, so which means that what number do you think you multiply by the denominator here, that will be 10. So you multiply by two, the same number must use to multiply the numerator, okay? Then when you multiply, you get two over 10. And remember, when you have something like this, it will be cheap for you. When you have two over 10, which means that you put the number of zeros in front of the numerator, which is one zero, and the numerator is two over 10. So when you have something like this, which means that you are going to make movement depending on the number of zeros that you have as a denominator here. Since you have only one zero, it means you make only one movement from the back, okay? And the point will be here this one will cancel one step here so now our final answer here will be 0 0.2 okay you see that we are getting the same answer good now let's try the other one here which b we have three and two That is three over two. Three over two means what? Two people are sharing three items. So which means that the item will be in the machine. So you have your machine here. The item is three. Always we share the numerator. Because the numerator is the taking part of the fraction. And then the denominator is the division part. So the people will be outside here. So if two people are sharing three items, we have the can you one one, okay? So they will get one. Or two times what number that will be much closer to three. That's two times one will give you two. Two is closer than to three, okay? So in order to confirm whether there will be a remainder, you use the one here to multiply the two, then you get two here. Then you subtract. So when you subtract the two from the three, get one as a remainder. Now, since there's nothing here to drop it down, 
two cannot even share the remainder. So you call for a point, okay? Since there's nothing here to drop it down, you call for a point. The point, the function of the point I said will produce zero to the remainder here, okay? So when the point produces zero to the remainder, it's not possible that the two can share it. So therefore two goes into 10 or two times what number will give you 10, which is five, okay? Now, in order to confirm whether there will still be a remainder, five times two will give you what? 10, then you subtract. So when you subtract, you get zero, zero here. So our final answer for B is 1.5. So when you have three over two, the decimal is 1.5. We can also use the other method. So this one, three over two, we can change this one into 10 because into 10 means we will make sure that our denominator will be 10. So once you have the three over two, the denominator, you have to change them into 10. It's not all fraction that you can change to 10. So since this one, you can change to 10, which means that you multiply by five. So the denominator here will be multiplied by five. That will give you 10. The same number must multiply by the numerator, okay? Good. Now, when you do that, you get 15 over 10, okay? And when you have 15 over 10, therefore, because you want to write the decimal for that, you put the number of zeros here in front of the numerator, okay? It's only one zero, so you put it in front of the numerator or over the 10, okay? Then because it's one zero, you are going to make only one movement, okay, starting from the back. So the point will be here, okay? So this zero will cancel this step. So for now, we have zero, one point five. And any number that begin with zero is the same as that number. So therefore we have 1.5, okay, very good. Now, let's see the C, which is three over four, okay. So three over four here, which means that the four people are sharing three. So three will be in the box. And the four will be outside here. Now three over four means Four people are sharing three. We have our three in the box in the fourth year. Four goes into three or four people sharing three. It can be possible. Then that day they will not receive anything. You put zero over there. So zero times four will give you zero. Then you subtract, you get three here. There's nothing here. So you call for a point. Okay. When you call for a point, then the point will fetch zero to this number, making it possible. Now it's 30 now. Four goes into 30 if four people are sharing 30. Or four times what number? That will be much closer to 30. That is four times seven. Four times seven will give you 28. Okay, 28 is closer to 30, so four times seven will be 28. That is 28. Then you subtract. Here will be two, and here will be zero. Okay, so 
four goes into the two, it can be possible. There's no need. Then some of our point instance will be the same point in Abesama is zero. Okay? The same point in the function is not more zero to the number is So it will produce zero to this one, making it 20. Four goes here, five. Okay? Five times four will give you 20. So when you subtract, you get zero, zero. Okay? Now the final answer is 0 0.75. So per this one here, the answer is 0 0.75. Okay? 0 0.75. You can try the other method. Let's solve this for one over three. One over two, here, multiply by five, multiply by five. I have five over 10. And when you have five over 10, you put the zero in front, in front of the numerator over 10. Because you have only one zero, you're going to make only one movement. This one will cancel this zero. Now our final answer is 0 0.5. Okay. Now I have two over uh, five. Two over uh, five, two. In using the other method, you can also try the long division to see these two. Two over uh, five, I can rename this one or change this one into 10. 10 means or make sure that it will be over 10. So here times two, here times two, okay? That will be four over 10. So when you have four over 10, you put a zero in front of the four. The number of zero here, you place it in front of the numerator or over the numerator, which is the denominator is 10 because we have only one move zero if you make only one movement that is this zero cancel this movement okay now we have our answer to be 0 0.4 okay that is now try this one now okay do it now and then determine your answer thank you